we're not confined really anymore with this rendering framework to developing UIs that look like 90s Windows desktop applications. Sure, you're going to need standard controls for interaction, but you know, I kind of want to stretch the imagination a little bit and think about new ways to present data to your users or to help them visualize the data. Data is critical, but helping your users be able to understand it more intuitively or interactively, I think is going to be a really important thing going forward. Part of this that drives a lot of these design ideas, I think, is a lot of what we've seen now on a lot of these mobile platforms, you know, some simplification of user interfaces in general, but then again, new types of effects, different ways to present or to help your user interact with the application. So I think most of you have seen the Fireflow demo. If not, I'm just going to show a quick example of it. This is one that we shipped with Delphi and Rad Studio. So the basic idea here is you're, you're getting a list of images and you can select an image and it will come to the forefront of the screen. And you have a, a scroll bar basically to flow through the set of the images. And I think most of you have seen this type of interface presented very well in Brightons, you know, where they show you the album covers and give you kind of a 3D way to see what's coming next or what's on either side of the main album that's selected at that time. You know, this was a really interesting idea and, you know, very capable uh, with FireMonkey. And so we wanted to take that and think about new ways to visualize image lists, provide what look like real world objects. So let me show you an example that we've been working on uh, just to play with uh, some of these ideas. So this is an example of a wall of pictures. Um, meant to look somewhat like a magazine stand. And so, you know, this is one idea on how you could present data in a way that allows users to use gestures or, you know, their mouse to basically quickly scroll through the data and get a quick view of what's available. What you see in this demo is the, the rendering of the images, the layout of the controls to give this kind of look of a magazine stand, uh, the ability to pick any 3D object in the scene with some physics to provide a sense of movement and also have kind of a feeling of speeding up and slowing down. So these are all these, these basic concepts that are trying to give you the sense that this is a, you know, a wall of pictures. Let's get to something that probably looks a little bit more like uh, something you see in the real world. So this is a postcard stand and I think many of you have seen these. These are basically look like a wired stand and they have these rows of images that you can individually move around. So again, this idea here is thinking about new ways to present this data. And we're just using ImageList as an example of that and utilizing the physics, the transformation capabilities of 3D to not just try to emulate 3D, but actually provide uh, these 3D, uh, 3D images to look and feel. This is using mouse interaction right now. And I actually deployed this to my Windows 8 desktop setup. It's an HP Touch Smart. Uh, and it works really well with those gestures. So being able to select, use the screen and swipe and, and do these movements. So basically using the mouse movements, but with your hands. I think another very interesting way would be that was it's through like a connect uh, camera interface as well. We're really starting to get to that point where you're interacting with your application in wholly new ways. And image lists really are the most visually appealing way to get a sense of this, but why not present any type of data with the, through this mechanism? And so here's the last example that I wanted to share with you. This is basically a Rolodex. So many of you have probably seen these. These are kind of old school now. Uh, where they're essentially a deck of uh, cards where you can put people's names. But here what we're going to do is we're going to put some images and be able to cycle through the Rolodex. Now this is a fully 3D object. You can see we're rotating around it. And each of these separate images are pickable, meaning you could select them out in 3D space. So the, the work of uh, doing the, the translation between 2D space and 3D space is, is built into this control. So that's, a, uh, again, a couple of examples of different ways to take, and it, it doesn't have to be just images, but I'd like to show you what somebody else has been working on here, which is basically they took the Fireflow demo, and rather than just showing um, uh, images, they're actually showing forms. So these forms are live forms in 3D space, and they act just like this Fireflow demo. And we could do basically the same thing using these other structures, 3D structures that we built. So this is, again, live forms, you can modify data, you can actually interact with the database here if I were to save that. 
And of course, these are um, capable of, since it is FireMonkey, just deploying right onto our macOS machine. So there is running in macOS now. And I also have my 3D stand running over here. Let me find an image directory, grab some pictures of Surf. So again, um, FireMonkey really gives you not only new ideas on how to present data, but of course the great support for both uh, Mac OS X and for Windows. Just to make sure it's crystal clear for everybody out there, it's not just the Delphi language that supports both uh, Windows and Mac OS, it's also the C++ language. For your C++ builder developers out there, it's a great time to upgrade and start taking advantage of this opportunity to start moving uh, applications or building applications in new visually appealing ways for both Windows and Mac.